All right, so now we're going to welcome to the stage Owen Burns. Yeah, come on up. That's what it's a quick bar. To uh, advance, right? Oh, the clicker. Hello, I'm Owen. Uh, my name is Mark Rucker. This is Tool Charm. So, Businesses have a strong incentive to integrate their software with the other services that their customers use to drive business value. But today, there are so many email tools, business intelligence tools, HR platforms, CRMs, that it's impossible for any software company to manually build out integrations for all the services that their customers might be using. There are existing solutions to this, but they require about as much development as developing the integrations themselves and often cut some of the features out from the services that the customers use. And this is a problem that seems very solvable by generative AI like ChatGPT and GPT-4. However, as we spent the last year working on this problem, it's not as easy as it seems. Um, incorporating functional AI, as we like to call it, um, using GPT-4 takes anywhere between one to five minutes to complete a successful action, an accuracy rate of only about 70%. And it costs about 20 cents to perform each action, which just isn't sustainable for real world production applications. So our view on this is that the only way that any piece of software or AI powered system can communicate with other services are these things called APIs. And these APIs, you make requests, but formatting those requests is below, should be below the pay grade of an advanced reasoning model like GPT-4. Those are models trained to understand the entirety of human language and formatting requests is such a smaller problem than that than it is just a very inefficient use of resources, which is borne out in our results of how expensive and long it takes for these models to make these requests. Our solution to this is a much smaller AI model that's trained specifically to turn text into these requests that can then be run immediately in about as much time as it would take. So the first way that we're productizing this technology is an API that programmers can use to build integrations into their software with natural language. For example, you could just say, send an email and post that request to us, and it'll send an email, whatever email platform your customer uses. I mentioned uh, for an example of how you might use this technology, put yourself in the position of building an email platform. You might want to build a new feature that allows you to that allows your users to create tasks directly from their incoming emails. But there's a lot more problems with that. You don't know what a, a task provider your customer uses. So building this in tool charm is as simple as authenticating your users, um, which is completely handled by us in your interface. So you don't have to go to some other website in order to do that. And then it's as simple as creating um, the button and um, making an API call directly to our platform. You can see it's quite simple to build a feature like that, where normally it would take days, maybe even weeks to build a feature. Um, and then we're looking to extend this technology using uh, this technology that we've built um, into our workflows API. And this essentially allows you to build kind of reasoning heavy and multi-step workflows, which just isn't possible with the current solutions that are provided. And we're also planning on offering something called company fine tuning, which allows you to kind of use the tool charm technologies that we built with your internal APIs. And that's to build kind of like a co-pilot for your product. You can think of like the Microsoft co-pilot, which works across all the, um, the office suite. But we let you do that with your own uh, with your own APIs, completely managed and built by us. So our view is that the market size for a product like ours is pretty much the market for that solution we previously mentioned, unified APIs that combine all of these services into one integration that you can build. Um, and around four billion dollars of that total market are unified APIs that don't operate in industries that have additional privacy considerations, such as banking, identity providers that would have additional considerations that wouldn't necessarily work well with our approach. And of that $4 billion, if we got a 10% market share, that would be about $400 billion. But because there are so many AI companies coming out now that are trying to build these automation platforms, the market for a product like ours is growing rapidly. I think um, the 16% per year right now is in the growth for AI automation companies. You might be wondering, why are we the right team to build the solution? Well, we know the industry and the problem a lot. Uh, we spent the last year trying to build an automation platform. And that's how we kind of realized that the current solutions are not sustainable, and that's why we decided to go down this path. 
I want to talk a little bit about his AI research experience. Yeah, so I've been working at AI. I started learning about it in high school. I've done AI research since I came to UCF, co-authored a couple of papers. Um, I've worked across the intersection of AI and other industries, robotics, um, quantum computing. And I've worked in industry and research. We've worked at Morgan & Morgan, uh, by and I built models for them. So that experience is what's gonna allow us to build this model. And for Mark's part, he has a lot of connections in the Orlando business economy and in hackathons, but I would say for that. Yeah, so for those that don't know, hackathons are essentially a uh, 36 hour like innovation marathons. So it's really popular um, in universities and in the business world. And um, I was the lead organizer for the one at UCF and I have a lot of connections at other hackathons across the country, which is really crucial for our early marketing and um, product ideation. And it's additionally, because of this, um, these opportunities, we have access to a lot of um, top university engineering talent. As we move forward, we have a lot of interest, people interested um, that are previously interned at uh, some of the biggest companies in the world. So it's definitely an exciting problem that people want to work with. So that's what we have. Right, so we're going to take questions. Murray's yeah. first. Back one. Thank you for the presentation. It's a really, really um, interesting presentation. It's blowing my mind. <laughs> Please keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing. I think it's a very uh, important um, like, contribution in general in AI. But my question is, um, you mentioned that the accuracy is 70%, but you didn't mention what your accuracy, your improvement is the first question. So what we've built so far is a platform that does pretty much this, but using GPT-4. Over the past year, we initially thought that this problem would be solvable with generative AI as it stands now. So we built out a platform that is able to produce those results, and that's how we got those numbers. We found that with the best models, best prompting. Oh, so you're not improving accuracy. We yeah, are, we so. We, def we definitely are. And I'm asking about that yeah. improvement. Yeah, so, so the you're saying that 70 figure. is in the market? And what you are suggesting, what you're offering. Yeah, so 70% is what we've determined is achievable using just GPT-4. And we are improving that by training a model that is solely able to translate text into API requests. And because we're able to train that model on lots of data generated by our current platform, that's how we're going to push the accuracy up into the high 90. Dynamically. We're look, yeah, we're looking to target the, the high 90%, like 98, 99% accuracy. Okay. Quick question. How does your product compare to any competition out there? What are your top competitors in this marketplace? Yeah, so there's a couple that are kind of working on solving this problem in different ways. Um, there's Zapier, which many of you might have heard of. They're an automation platform. The problem is they're not really built for, for um, companies to incorporate into their own software. It's kind of a personal consumer-focused automation platform. Um, they offer an API, which allows developers to incorporate it into their products, but it requires your users to have a Zapier account and to kind of build those apps through Zapier. And that's just not sustainable for, for to expect your users to have an account for another platform in order to handle it. So, for example, most people in here have Google. Google mm -hmm. name, unless you have an iPhone. I'm not a big fan of iPhone. I'm not a big fan of Tesla. I'm assuming that most people are familiar with Google, all their apps. How does yours integrate compared to the Zapier or compared to, say, Google Chat or some of the other integration softwares out there? What's yeah. going to differentiate you from the rest of the company? For sure. So the current way that a lot of developers build integrations into their software are these things called unified APIs. And basically what that does is you can make a request to their service and then they route that to any of the services they support. Right. But these companies don't use AI, and so what they do is they take the schemas from all of these different products that they're integrating and map it into one static schema that developers that are using that unified API have to learn. And the problem with that approach is that when they're integrating services from a lot of different verticals, in order to create a single general schema that works for all of them, a lot of times the more um, like platform-specific features of the different softwares that they're integrating get cut out for so like you're only incorporating the features that are common to all of them right yeah and so because we're building a model that understands how api requests are formed in general we can fine tune that on the documentation from any service and then as long as it is a feature that you can access through the api our model will be able to do it and furthermore 
because we're using AI to make these requests, we don't have to create a static schema for developers to learn. Instead, they can pass to us however they want the output formatted, and we'll put it into that format and then give it back to them. Customized. Yes. Perfect. All right, next question is Denny. Is this something that's done or something that's in process? Second question, what are you charging for if you are your customer? So yeah, it's something that we're um, we're currently working on training these models, right? We built this existing platform that allows us to get the, the lots of data that we need in order to train the models. Um, and that's that's enabling us to speed up the development process a lot. And it's something that kind of provides us a moat around what we're doing because we built this platform, which not everyone has this data. We we built this platform to get the data of API requests that are valid, so we can then yeah go on and train our model. As far as pricing goes, we're basing our pricing model kind of on the idea of what Open API Open AI uses. So they charge per API request and per uh, how big the request is. So if you're sending more text to it, they charge you a little bit more. Less, they charge you a little bit less. So then our pricing scales with our costs. Um, yeah. And what's the, re the reaction you have from potential customers? Yeah, we've who's been your ideal customer. Our ideal customer is, is, is kind of twofold. It's kind of people that are building new applications and are looking to cut down on a lot of the in, the time that it takes to build out all of these integrations that their customers might want. And then there's the existing uh, software companies who um, their customers are constantly asking them. I mean, you can ask anybody who builds software. Their, com their um, customers are constantly asking them to add new integrations, and we're kind of making that process for adding new integrations a lot easier. Next. Go ahead. Oh, well, we've got to finish the question. Yeah, uh, so a lot of developers that have built software, um, they have some feature in their head that they would like to integrate. Like, yes, we'd love customers, like the example we shared, we'd love customers to be able to create a task in whatever task management platform they use directly from an email. But the engineering requirement for that, for our product, is just too great. And the feature is maybe like a stretch goal, and so they just don't implement it. So in addition to companies that are building new software. Anybody that has had these features in their mind, we're, building, we're providing them an easier way to do it. So now it's doable for their development team. Hmm. Next question is Sean. I will tell you one is a slight presentation. That's too much. If you want me to listen to you on stage, I can help you out on a simple point. The other one is, um, any viewer tell on 30 seconds on elevator pitch so I can tell them I leave here what I heard today? Yeah, for sure. So um, businesses want to build integrations into their products so that customers can interact from their service to the other services they use. Right now, it's, it takes a lot of engineering to build those integrations, and we're providing um, an easier way to build them out. Which that could help. Well, that's a good that's, a, that's the purpose of the elevator pitch. You have seen that, you guys know about it. I think you should have an elevator pitch in your pocket for them. You don't know what you need. That's really investment. Mm -hmm. That's okay. My next question is Murray. Can you give me the difference between API management system and your uh, tool? And has it been deployed already? I just, the, I guess I missed it in the, in the slides. Has it so, been deployed? Um, so we've deployed. The, an early version of it that uses GPT-4. And so we're gonna be onboarding a couple of customers that we know personally that are gonna be using it at like a flow scale. Because even though it's inefficient, we have some um, cloud credits we've built up that will allow us to basically take the loss and we're gonna use their data to help us uh, guide the generation of training data for the model that's gonna replace what we have right now. Um, could you repeat the first part of that question? Uh, what is the difference between API management system and yours? Yep. I understand that it's AI based, based. Mm -hmm. I mean, but then I'm trying to understand the differentiator between the other companies. But what is the difference between yours mm -hmm. and the one you are emerging right now? Yeah, so <laughs> the, um, the current solutions is API management, unified APIs. They map the schemas of all the different products into their own schema. So that still requires developers to learn whatever that schema is. When using our product, they don't have to learn a schema at all. They can use however they want data yeah. output to be formatted. And I think what's bigger is that it's way less restrictive than a lot of these other unified APIs because um, you don't necessarily have to uh, kind of conform to what they're doing. And because they try and work with so many with so many like 
different types of services using one schema. It kind of restricts what features you have access to. And the reason you might choose to use one platform or an, over another, it kind of loses that because you're trying to unify it into one schema. All right, question. Oh, yeah, you're first. Go yeah. Ahead. So um, I have a, a SaaS software, mm -hmm. and a lot of my customers want integrations with uh, accounting. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so for my developer to do that, it takes probably about four weeks to integrate QuickBooks into my software. Mm -hmm. So with your solution, I think, uh, Mark, you mentioned, yep. that's fast. Yeah. So tell me how much time I would probably save by leveraging your software. Using Tooltron, you could build something like that in probably under an hour compared to the four weeks that um, it would traditionally take to build something like this, because it just requires you to simply um, we make it really easy. We provide all the steps through our API. It's just a matter of plugging that API into your existing product. Yeah. So the idea of the workflow is that we would have one API that handles authentication and another one that allows you to run requests. So in the front end of your software, look up QuickBooks or any other accounting software click to sign in, and then you would make an API call to us. We would handle the authentication and store that information. And then in the app, you could say, um, what's the task that your customers would be doing? Uh, they would want uh, their revenue value uh, pushed into QuickBooks. Yeah, so update revenue value for this customer in QuickBooks. And you just provide the data about uh, whatever uh, this new revenue data is. You would just provide that um, just in the same string where you're passing in um, the information about like update this in QuickBooks, and then it's done. In our platform, that request goes up. Our model takes the text request in, turns it into an API request. We get the stored authentication information, combine it all, and send it to QuickBooks. I would, just as a side, like I would, Definitely highlight that mm -hmm. as your value prop mm -hmm. because you just saved me three weeks of development time. Mm -hmm. And then if you take that and say the average developer is 160, you're, you're saving me that you're saving me a lot of money yeah. just by uh, using. It. All right, we are running out of time. We only have time for two more. Eric, um, how close are you, or is this even on your radar, to be able to do voice-activated commands? So um, there's a lot of services out there already that are not super expensive that allow you to take in some voice input and turn it into text very well. A lot of them are actually provided through cloud providers like Azure and Google Cloud. So uh, that's not something we previously thought about, but if there was a demand for it, it wouldn't be difficult to implement. Where it could be especially helpful is for blindness accessible. Yeah, we're planning on, after we kind of develop the API, we're planning on building a platform, which kind of uh, enables anybody to use this technology um, and not just make it accessible to developers. And I think that that's where we'll see a lot more features. Last question is in the back. Why you I think that's definitely something that's uh, really valuable. Um, our goal is um, to ed accommodate as many SaaS softwares as we can from the start. But I think like new SaaS softwares that we don't necessarily have um, uh, kind of in our on our radar, I think it would be a very valuable solution to offer that. And because how we kind of process new APIs, we have a really simple process for that. So I think it would be really easy to offer kind of a, a thing for new SaaS that are coming from. Also, we have limited time here at One Million Cups, but your point is well taken. If any of you in the audience have more questions for our speakers today, talk to them in the networking afterward. But thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we welcome Roger Cardoza to the stage.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Roger. I am a agent. So, this is missing some parts of my slide. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? I can fix this. Yeah. 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 So your customers are reaching out to you, but you're not answering. Why? Picture this. Maria is excited to purchase your product and service. But before she buys, she has a question. So she goes to your website. It just sends a question using your web platform. She even goes to your Instagram page and sends a message. Um, hours pass by. They pass by, no answer. So without the answer for her simple question, Maria just leaves and buys somewhere else. This is happening to millions of businesses every single day. You have one chance, one shot to connect with your customers. But if you leave them waiting, you're gonna create frustrated customers that will go buy somewhere else. Just a second. Nervous here, guys. My first speech. Sorry. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> and um, if you leave them waiting, you're gonna be part of the seventy billion dollars that it's lost every year because poor customer support. And you know what's worse? That most of the companies they don't even know. It. The main reason why customer support. It's low, expensive, and complex. It's because all of these tools are based on email. Email is good for communication, but it's extremely messy. Uh, inboxes can be helped. It's a horrible sort of way of providing customer support. And you might ask, oh, what about traditional web chats then? Does this feel like good customer support to you? <laughs> I think there was a better way. Imagine you can provide 24 hours customer support to your users automatically. No more waiting, no more delays, no more frustration. Reply agent solve these issues. We empower companies like yours to provide 24 hours customer service in any language, saving your company money skyrocketing your customer support and serving your customers in the apps they already have on their phone, they already use it, they already are addicted to. So you might be asking, why are we better? Why are we better from the competition? Different from everything else in the market, we are also a platform to manage the entire customer journey. We can do that in one single place, one single interface. So you don't need to be juggling between uh, apps or uh, applications, right? Or you're not, never going to lose any information, any piece of information ever again. In the past two weeks, without any marketing exposure at all, we already have uh, 50 beta users using the tool. And we have over 100 people in our waiting list eager to start to use it. I want to tell you about the market. We got into this because we have some experience in this market and um, because their market is huge. There are over six plus billion users of messaging apps to date, and it's growing for the past 10 years. Uh, WhatsApp alone in US grew over 11% last year. The support software industry is projected to be $58.1 billion by 2030. But there are plenty of room for us to grow. Uh, our competitors 
uh, our number one competitor only has 1%, um, actually less than 1% of that market. We're locking user, users in with a premium model and uh, the most affordable price compared to the competition. So that makes us our uh, the number one choice, even for low income markets like India, Brazil, Mexico. So you might be thinking, why are we um, the best team to innovate the customer support online? We know this competitive landscape. We've tried every single solution out there. Nothing solves the problem like we do. We know how to build stable and profitable businesses. And it doesn't hurt to know that this team is working together for the past eight years full time, and we already have two successful exits. It's taking $350,000 to go fast. We want to scale the team, further develop the product, and a big international marketing push that will bring our, our first 10,000 users within the first year. I promise you, reply agent will become the norm. We have the team, there is a pain, we have a solution, we have a beautiful product, and we have initial traction. So if you'd like to be part of this beautiful team, I invite you to, invite, to invest in our team. Thank you. All right, we're gonna take questions starting with Murray. Um, this is such a beautiful product, uh, congratulations. And um, my question is, one of the most expensive parts of AI is fine tuning and training. How are you going to do that? Actually, one of the things I think every application should do is to make it easier for the end user. And we definitely, do, we do make it easier. You can create, let's say, uh, AI trained chatbot on WhatsApp if you want in less than 30 seconds in our platform. So, and we allow the users to train themselves if they want with simple text. They want, I want you to answer my customers in a sarcastic uh, way, a tone. There you go. People are going to start to asking your a question to you like, hey, if I buy 10 of your products, would you uh, free ship it? And she's gonna answer like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we allow the users to actually train without any special commands, which is just text. Say, oh, I want it to, to be this way. I don't want you to, um, to talk about something else. I don't want you to break the line. Whatever. You don't need technical knowledge to do that. I'll insert a question. Uh, you said you had 50 users already. Can you talk about some of their industries and how they're using the product? Yes, yes. We have uh, our main uh, focus is internet uh, internet marketing agencies and freelancers. They are it's going to be our first uh, customers. We are we have our own team of them, and they are using already for their customers. They are loving the platform, like uh, I said in the presentation. They don't need to use three or four different other platforms to achieve. They can achieve everything inside our own. Bakery, we have a producer in the south of Brazil. We have Peter from the Solai Coffee using it. We have nothing but great feedback so far. In the bag. Yes. In the jacket. I was, I was, I was going to relate back to what he was saying about the, what the hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The bad joke. I'm sorry. I'll leave. <laughs> Josh is next. Do you, do you allow me to create a prospect pipeline so that all these requests coming in, I can actually sort them and prioritize them? So I know which one you can get back to versus ones that were, let's say, the AI or. Yeah, so the, the difference is so for our platform, we, we are not AI chat, we are not uh, logical chat. Actually, we uh, we have this unique ability that you can switch with that. And the AI at the same time and switch into, uh, let's say, a logical request to speak to someone. So we can also, we are, we are, we have our teams as well. So we can direct, redirect the uh, 
an agent here or in America, whatever they might want. It's possible to do. Next question. Mm -hmm. So, you mentioned that you say I'm the, I'm the business and I need support. That's it. Walk me through that process. Have uh, how does that integrate with your system? And my chatting. Then, so. Then, uh, Package of them right in the Instagram DM. For you as the business, you just connect your own Instagram <coughs> by Meta, and it happens directly in Instagram. Did I answer your question? Next question in front. How do you kind of how do um, businesses provide information about their products and like their companies so it can be trained specifically to what their customer support needs are? For example, I'm going to give you an example. If you have a website, so you go to a platform, you put your website. We go to your website. Website, we scrape the whole content of your website. So in less than a minute, you already have the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. The system knows everything about your business. You can also upload the uh, PDFs about your business, your products, your service. So let's say you have an e-shop with 1,000 products. We're going to go to your e-shop. We scrape the whole, your whole database, all your products. So in less than a minute, the, the chatbots know pricing, description, everything about your product. Yes. Nice job, uh, nice job Roger. Uh, do we have a checkout to teach our customer wants to buy your service or product? No, you can implement that within the platform, but we haven't uh, had a checkout built in in our system. But it's very easy, actually, to integrate with any checkout uh, systems out there, like, for example, Shopify. You know, a couple of clicks, you can connect our platform to chat or Shopify, and you have checkout. So when someone wants to talk to you and you want to offer, hey, I want to buy this product, you can display the product inside, let's say, Messenger or Telegram. And just click there and go to the payment in the external and say Stripe. Yes. I was going to say, great presentation. Um, I was curious a little more about the rate. I know how you were saying it's affordable, $15 is like a starting. What exactly is that rate based on? Well, like a monthly rate or? Yeah, it's a, a SaaS subscription uh, based model. Mm -hmm. So we charge, it starts, uh, it's free, you start for free. You, uh, different than any other platform, you can. Once we are public, right now we are in beta, you can go sign up for free and use the whole platform for free, up to 100 contacts. So you can get you connect everything, see how it works. After 100 contacts, you're going to start to pay $15. We actually have six different up sales inside our system. So you can actually bring your team to have six different uh, persons that needs to be connected. So we have sales pipeline inside our system. So for example, if you want, Every person that goes to my Instagram create an opportunity in my sales pipeline, and that person will be informed. So each person you bring in is another 10 extra dollars. Yeah. We also have a full uh, white label system. So if you want to resell that, we allow you to fully white label the platform and sell to your customers so they never know which platform you're using, which is not possible today. In other platforms, your, your end customer will find out which platform you're using. And in the end, they're gonna be like, oh, he, he charged, it's $15 and he's charging me $800 for this. I'm gonna do it myself. We, we also solve this problem. There are many other uh, up sales inside the platform. It is one of them. Thank you. Do you have a question? Yeah, so I know that it's for firsthand that it's very expensive to run large language models of this GBP4 or an open source model. Um, is it your pricing? Uh, is free up to, I think you said, 100 contacts. What is the the, game, the plan that you have in place if a customer has, say, 50 contacts, they're using the platform very heavily and that's generating a lot of AI usage and running up the cost while they're still in the free tier? Yeah, uh, they bring their own API team for the, the chat. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. 
Yes. I didn't see a QR or a website. Where can we connect to this, even if, even if it's the beta model? Okay. And the website is replyages.org. I also have an additional question is, besides the uh, free model that you described, uh, if someone wants to evaluate how this could work for their company, is there a demo site or a, a fictional company that you've set up so they can just see the results of what they will get when it's set up? Yes, in fact, yesterday I hired an assistant to build all of this for me because I'm finding hard at the moment to find some time to develop this. Uh, by next week, we're going to have a specific page that you're going to have with examples for lawyers, for uh, coffee shops, and all these things that you can go in there and play and see it work in, in real time. That's great. Any other questions? Yes, question. Uh, do you use any other AI, uh, APIs or AI tools, or is it just an AI right? Well, we have uh, integration with make.com, so you can connect with our platform with another 1,600 other uh, tools out there, anything you think of, you're going to get. We also have uh, legacy integrations with uh, the ChatGPT, with the uh, Active Campaign, um, the other platform. Okay, well, we're going to wrap up with the concluding question as a community. What else can we do for you? But at this very moment, I'm looking for uh, customers. So if there's any way my my business can help you, I'll be more than happy to. Uh, okay, thank you, Roger. <laughs>
uh, I think through those connections, we find a lot of new opportunities. We can learn how to present ideas in a better fashion. And you know, that's that takes time to find those things. Uh, next week, we will have this presenter. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we are looking for a second presenter. Uh, so uh, if you do, if you have been coming regular and it's time to present your company, make sure you ask myself or Josh to help you prepare your slides and then uh, we'll get you set up in the system. All right, let's see what else. So before, before I release everyone, uh, we're gonna be networking in the lobby. Uh, if you didn't have enough time before, you can also speak to presenters a little more. Remember in the next week to stretch yourself a little bit, to embrace change. Okay, I know it's work. I know it's difficulty. Sometimes we don't, uh, we don't really like those things, but one of those ancient philosophers, you know what he said? He said, difficulty strengthens the mind as labor does the body. So difficulty is a normal part of life. So with that, I'll let you all go. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.